My name is Dr. Michael McKillop, MD. I need to start off with one thing. I'm not a real doctor, so if I'm too much wrong with you, don't come running to me because I'm not able to help you. First and foremost, I am a man with a disability. I'm a four time part of the champion. I've been able to run around the world, compete on the biggest stages. But the one thing that I always think about is how I got here today. And I'm not talking about the traffic to get down here. I'm talking about how am I able to be here talking to you. And we always have to start at the beginning. I've chosen the title The Man's Doing. And the reason why I say that is because, like I said, my journey here is completely different. I've had to overcome things, challenge things, and experience things not anyone in this room has had the opportunity to do. And I guess, with any good story, there always has to be a beginning. I'm going to take you back to the beginning of my life. I was born in Cushadol in 1990. I was born into a normal family, and uh, I had two older sisters at the time. And I have built a couple of images of me growing up as a young boy. You can see in the up right hand corner of the graphing hand is in that position. My hand sat in that position until I was about seven or eight years of age. But I, before that, at a year and ten months, I fell down the stairs. My parents kind of picked me up while I was okay, took me to the doctor to check me over. I was okay. And over the next couple of weeks or months, they really started to notice that I wasn't really using my right hand. My hand was going into that position. They noticed that I was starting to walk with a limb. And they got a consultation with a, with a doctor in the Royal Victoria Hospital in Belfast. And they turned around to, to him and they said to... The consultant said to my parents, I should have it. Yep, it's just normal, get over it. And for another year, my parents fought for another consultation because it was getting worse. They noticed that I really was walking with that thing. And uh, they really noticed that I had no use of my right hand. And it took until two years or ten months where I got another consultation and I walked in, a happy and rocky boy, in to the consultation room. And my parents, life changed forever. Because the consultant turned around to my parents and said, Your son has either had a stroke or he's got cerebral palsy. Just like that, their life changed. No parent wants to have a child with a disability. No person wants to have a disability. This is where I talk about acceptance. Eight. The street bearing me choice tonight. Accept the conditions as they exist, or accept the responsibility for changing them. Because like I said, I was technically broken in some people's lives. My parents couldn't F me up, give it to the doctor and go, we broke, we need a new look. No, they had to accept that their son had a disability. They had to accept the responsibility for giving me the best opportunity in life. Setting me on a path, on a journey. And the one thing they gave to me, as a young boy growing up, was belief. Because if you don't have belief in yourself, you will not be able to move forward in life. Obviously, growing up with a physical disability, I stood out. And obviously, going through the ages of four, five, six, and seven, you, all you want to do is fit in. You want to go out and play with your friends, you want to run around, you want to use both hands, you want to kick with both feet. But that, that wasn't me. But my parents would give them an opportunity. I became the first child in the UK and Ireland to be injected by a cannabis called Botulina. Don't worry, there's nothing in the spy. But I was the first child in the UK and Ireland to be injected by it. A teaspoonful of bottom line would kill 100,000 people in food. My parents would take them at risk for me, giving me the chance to better myself, to allow me to be able to walk without a limb, to give me use of my right hand. If it wasn't for my parents, I wouldn't be standing here today, and I know that is the case for everyone, because without parents, we wouldn't be alive. And for me, I'm very, very grateful of that.
Like I said, I just did security security boat. And the next couple of years of my life, four, five, six, you start primary school. And they quickly noticed that I was struggling mentally as well. And then within a couple of years, I got diagnosed with dyslexia. I struggled with my ABCs. I struggled with my songs. I'm once again, I was different. I physically stood out, I mentally stood out. But at the age of 10 and 11, you really don't know. All you want to do, like I said, is be like everybody else. And it was whenever I wanted to go to big school, I'd be told I wasn't able to do the 11 plus. I wasn't smart enough. There's no real point to even try. But I always say in life, if you don't, you don't try to let the room. And that is what my parents always taught me. Give something a chance. Try it. Because you just never know in life. But that got taken away from me. That got taken away from my parents. And for me, that didn't allow me to follow in the dream that I wanted. I wanted to go to school in Belfast and follow the success of my father, but that wasn't possible. I went to school, like I stood, stood out, firmly apart, physically and mentally, and like a bullet, I got picked on. I remember I got ver verbally and physically abused. And I remember it got to the point where I actually I had to tell my mom, do you know what? I'm not going back. I sat and I got my uniform and I threw it in the bin. And they're like, go and play, go play sports, that's fine. I was like, great, 11 years of age, don't need to go back to school. And on the Sunday night, my parents brought in a press, he was one, coming up, we sat outside. And they said to me, you don't allow someone to stop you do something that you want to do, or that you need to do. Because you're 11 years of age, you need to get an education. Are you going to stop someone from doing, allowing you to go and play sport, to be part of sport? At that moment in time, at the age of 11, I understood that it was okay to be different. It was every single person in this crowd is different. Every single person in this crowd has positives and has negatives. It's about being able to use those positives and making your life and other people's lives better. So I always say to myself, do something today that your future self will thank you for it. Because as soon as you walk out that door, we can make a change. You can listen to me, you can listen to all the other amazing speakers. You are in control. I got belief from my parents. I got the passion from my parents to overcome, to challenge. Never say no and always give a great opportunity in life. And move on to the next thing. And the title is Resilience. Realistically, what is it that for some people to overcome things? Some people, it's bouncing back from things. Some people, it's recovered. But before I give you my answer and my thoughts, if we are all watching TV, which most of us do, and you're sitting with your partner or your family member, and it's absolutely the rubbish on the TV. What do you do? What do you do? You should be used to the child. You change the channel. That's all you gotta do. Just like a mindset. For me, it's the ability to change the channel. Once that channel is changed, and we have it in here, everything's possible. I go back and I think of myself, okay, I'm a disabled child. I've got learning difficulties, I have speech problems. I actually got that even to epilepsy at 14. I'm on medication the rest of my life. But what actually worked? What actually is a positive thing that I felt like I could do? I could travel the world and to beat for my country. Live people to dreams. I'm the person that puts on that green jersey. I'm that person who runs in front of 90,000 people. But in actual fact, I've just turned what so-called so negative of a disability into my positive good. Because it shows in life anything is possible. Don't put limitations going to yourself. I always think to myself how I got through so many difficult situations in my life. And I think right back to the start. And that came from my parents. At that two years and ten months in that hospital room. 
And I really think to myself, actually, do you know what? Without them, I wouldn't be standing here today. But that goes to show also in my athletics career. If it wasn't for my strength and conditioning coach, my nutrition not that I listen to her very often, but she goes down. My, my physiotherapist, my sponsors, my private sponsors, for who they live in a shop. <laughs> but the one thing that I always realize is yes, I get the glory. Yes, I come across like first. And when they build a big building, they have to build out a good structure. A good foundation, and my foundation was my team. That is why I blinded myself team killed. Because when I think to myself, I have to be able to communicate right. I have to trust. Because in the end of the business and life for anyone, trust is a part. You have to have good communication skills. You have to have a plan, goal setting. These are all elements that I've had to do in my running career to be successful. And I leave with one quote. Well, actually, before I do that, what if Michael Jordan would have quit? Okay, he did quit, he retired. But what if he would have quit when he was in high school? He would never have made speech check. He would have taken What's going to be your space time? What's the one thing that you've got to take away from tonight and make change in your life? Because like I always say with my quote, if you believe, you will achieve. Because if it's in here, and it's over here, and they connect, anything is possible. I want to say a big massive thank you for having me and listening to me tonight. Hopefully you have a wonderful evening. I'm telling you.